Look, in any one uh, given day, uh, there are always jobs available in the economy. It's true, you know, ultimately, if everyone was to get off welfare, we'd need to create even more jobs. But that's the government's whole agenda, is to have a vibrant economy that does produce jobs and uh, make sure that the right incentives are there. But I think you know, the Future Focus programme, where we made people re-register if they'd been on the benefit for 12 months or more, demonstrated quite clearly, I think, to all New Zealanders that when some pressure is applied in the system, you will get people coming off welfare rolls into work. We also bring in people from overseas, as people will be well and truly aware, to work in and horticultural programs and things that we have because at certain times we can't find people in the labour markets despite the fact there's 350,000 people on a benefit. So I certainly accept there's not a job for every single person but I don't accept that there aren't some jobs out there. Why do you say, do you say that people should accept uh, menial jobs if there's nothing else <coughs> Well, In the end, the, the, the pathway out of poverty is through work and um, ensuring people that uh, have a job is, is very often a starting point. People don't um, end up with the Joneses sort of finished off, you've got to start off somewhere else. Do you think well, you've got the balance right? Well, I, th I do think we've got the balance right. I mean, firstly, it's very important to understand that the pressure we're putting on the welfare system is to say you have to be work available. If there is no job there for you, if the government hasn't played its part in having a vibrant economy, then at the end of the day, nothing happens and nothing changes. In terms of work testing, having a part-time work test for a mother whose youngest child is five or above is not out of line with the OECD. In fact, it's still on pretty much the generous side. and um, We've got incentives in the system for young people. But our big focus of attention are those who have been harder to move off welfare rolls for quite some time. And frankly, if we don't go and tackle those 16 and 17 year olds who may well end up being on a benefit for a decade or so, I don't think we're doing the right thing by the taxpayer, but I think we're also doing the very, very much the wrong thing by those people because those youngsters will not end up getting the sort of jobs that they should, should aspire to. So we've got to give them the training and support. If we were just simply saying to people, well, get off the benefit, you're on your own, that would, be a, that would be a very different message from saying we're going to invest $130 million a year to try and give people the skills and support they need. On those horticulture jobs, why do you think they do have to employ overseas workers when there obviously is spare capacity in New Zealand's labour market? Well, I think sometimes people just don't want to take those jobs. Sometimes people say it doesn't suit them. There's a variety of reasons. The fairness sometimes are in different locations from where people are unemployed. So there's a variety of factors. But... Just like you know, in any one given year, lots of companies uh, are created and others fall by the wayside. At any one time, there's around about 1,000 to 2,000 jobs being advertised in work and income. There are many other jobs that are out there. Some people are more aggressive at looking for work for others and those than others, and those that are more aggressive typically do tend to find work. But so should, the there be more regime. should there be more incentives? Sorry, no. Should there be more incentives for people? to move to the places where those horticulture jobs are perhaps? Well the most important yeah. thing is to have the setting right in welfare and that is it's got to be a system of mutual obligation where people recognise that the taxpayer is there to support them in their moment of need but it's also their responsibility if they can work and they can find a job to actually move into employment. But under the new regime realistically there isn't actually any more obligation is there because if, if they don't work they still get their benefit. Yeah but the, the difference is if they're offered a job and if there is a job there for them to take and they don't take it, that comes with sanctions.